There's something about survival horror games where a hapless, perpetually befuddled man is led by the nose by a woman, often on the other end of the phone, who doesn't quite tell him the whole story whilst weirdness unfolds all around him. Joining the likes of Ethan Winters from Resident Evil 7 and Thomas Evans from Made of Scare, we now have Roberto Late Lopez from Phobia San Divna Hotel. There's something of the other two games in Phobia, aside from the first person perspective and the aforementioned embattled protagonist. At a glance, the UI and inventory management system very strongly resemble those of RE7, whilst the ruined hotel setting and the use of a pocket watch to save gave me vibes of Made of Scare. Yes, in Made of Scare you save with a gramophone, but there's something of the period it's set in about a pocket watch. Going deeper, the DNA of the survival horror genre is written plain in the gameplay mechanics and level design of Phobia in a way that tells you the developers know what they're doing with it. Pulsatrix Studios was founded in 2019 in Sao Paulo, Brazil, but the team behind this game was working on it for a good while before then. As they say on their website, this was a labour of love and the kind of game that they always wanted to play, with no guarantee of profit. What we get as a result is something that uses that very familiar survival horror DNA in a creative way to carve out its own identity both in terms of the story it tells and, more importantly, the gameplay experience. There's an awful lot of positive in this game that I want to focus on, but there are also some issues that I want to address first. These aren't necessarily huge problems overall, but they do make the experience feel less polished than it could be. The biggest one is interaction with the environment, in particular with doors, puzzle elements and items you can pick up. The level of precision required here feels as though it was designed specifically with a mouse in mind rather than a controller, and even then I suspect it would still be frustrating in general and downright infuriating in combat situations. In other games, simply being in front of an object and looking in its direction is enough to produce the button prompt to interact, open or pick it up, but here you need the reticle to be directly over the thing with very little margin for error. In combat situations, this leaves you vulnerable to being hit just because it takes a couple of extra seconds to line things up to pick them up. Even outside of that, it makes it very easy to miss items just because you were looking at the wrong angle and didn't get any prompt to even tell you there was something there. Movement could also significantly benefit from a quick turn, especially in boss battles, as a quality of life improvement. Alongside that, whilst weapon swapping is generally fine, the fact that you can't do it whilst aiming and that there's a slight delay from when you stop doing so until you can swap becomes problematic in combat as does the occasional tendency of the game to not recognise that you're aiming, or to recognise that you are, but not that you fired. In a survival horror game you expect some level of sluggishness to the character, but when combined with boss fights where what you're fighting moves very fast, the balance can feel off. Luckily, this issue is not a constant one, and the more you get used to the playstyle, the more fun you can have with the bosses. Speaking of boss fights, the game has an option in the menu for ammo assistance in boss fights, delivering more ammo to you when you're running out. This is a great idea in and of itself, particularly for accessibility, but in the context of this game it's somewhat baffling that it's optional considering that the game doesn't actually give you enough ammo to kill the bosses without this option turned on. If it did, and running out of ammo during the fight was more about bad inventory management than a simple lack of supply, then the option would make more sense for players who needed it. As it is, it's definitely something that you shouldn't try to play the game without, as I initially did. Beyond these points though, the game overall delivers exactly what you would expect from a survival horror title. The level design is intricate and claustrophobic, with non-linear progression necessitating exploration and backtracking. There's plenty of optional areas to unlock that it's easy to overlook if you don't keep track of where you've been and what you've found, something the lack of a map necessitates doing manually, in turn making everything feel like you're discovering it for yourself. A big part of that is that, beyond the usual keys, bulk cutters and so on needed to get past barriers, you also have a camera that when used shows you gaps and passageways that don't exist outside of its lens. Whether you're looking into a different dimension or a different time isn't clear, but rooms will have different layouts and objects in them when viewed through the camera, allowing you to grab additional resources, find keys, or view puzzle solutions. This mechanic fits really well with the level design and doesn't feel either tacked on or overused. The puzzles themselves vary in complexity. You have the basic fetch and carry ones, but also those which require deciphering clues and codes, manipulating blocks to produce pictures or completed electrical circuits, and more. There are also a number of secondary puzzles which reward you with additional items for being more diligent in remembering what locked doors and obstacles you've come across, and going back even when you can see the way forward. The story underpinning the gameplay is that, as Roberto, you're investigating the strange goings on in the Santa Divinus Hotel that revolve around a cult that has been operating in and controlling the town for a long time, as well as the appearance of an apparition of a young girl wearing a gas mask. This provides the opportunity for some ghost story style scares which intertwine with the more tangible cosmic horror involving mutated enemies and a tyrant who pops up to chase you at certain points. As well as giving you a good fright, the story also does a good job of building intrigue as you piece together what has happened and what you're facing. One of its strongest points is that, even with the more conclusive of the possible endings, there are still a few gaps left for your imagination to fill in as far as the meaning of certain elements of the narrative. 
The only real downside to the story is that, particularly when you reach the ending, the dialogue can feel a little stilted or corny. However, this isn't a massive problem where it might be for a AAA production with fully motion captured actors' performances, and certainly isn't as comically bad as the likes of the first Silent Hill or Resident Evil. In terms of accessibility, again, this being a first time indie title means it doesn't have the array of options that we might expect in a higher budget and especially AAA game, but the developers have tried to at least incorporate options such as subtitle customization, reducing camera shake, options on holding versus toggling buttons, and the ability to turn on or off gameplay features such as ammo assistance, aim assistance, and whether the game shows you what your next objective is. With a bigger budget, they could certainly do more, and the lack of full control remapping is one glaring omission, but there is an admirable attempt here to deliver the ability for players to customise their experience. Overall, despite some elements that could do with fine-tuning, what Pulsatrix Studio have created here is a very capably put together and, more importantly, fun survival horror experience. It delivers exactly what players would expect from the genre, whilst taking inspiration from a variety of classic titles and remixing those elements in a way that gives it its own identity. If you're into survival horror, you should definitely play Phobia San Dimfna Hotel. I want to know what you think. If you've played Phobia, what was your verdict? If you haven't, will you be picking her up? Leave a comment and let me know. If you enjoyed this video, then give it a like and consider subscribing to keep up to date with all my content, like the video that just popped up, which YouTube thinks you should watch next. Check out the links in the description to join my Patreon for as little as £1 per month, or donate to my GoFundMe and get your name in the credits of my videos. Like those rolling up now. So I want to thank for supporting me and my content. Thanks for watching and see you next time.